Hi, my name is Kenneth Paul, and this is my woodworking shop. I'm glad to have you here. I make these videos to share with you woodworking techniques and the projects that come out of my woodworking shop. Today, we're going to look at what I consider the most overlooked aspect of tuning a bench plane. Everyone knows to flatten the sole, they know to flatten the back of the iron, sharpen the iron, make the chip breaker to the iron. Most people do that. What I see as a step that is skipped most often is getting the frog mated to the sole. On the Stanleys, uh, the Great Necks, the Miller Falls, the records, they're all copies of the Stanleys. Except for the bedrocks, there's four points of contact between the frog and the sole. And almost always when you loosen the, the screws to the frog, it rocks. I know you can tighten those screws down, but when you have less than perfect contact, you're opening yourself up for chatter, difficult, to, difficult alignment. So it's an easy fix. I'll walk you through the steps I use to make sure that I'm getting the best possible contact between the frog and the sole. It's a step you shouldn't be skipping. All right, we're going to get to it. And as always, if you like the content I'm producing here, do me a favor. Hit subscribe, hit like. Leave a comment. If you have any questions, ask. I'll answer them. All right, let's set up. All right, what we have here is a Great Neck number three, same as a, it's just a knockoff of the Stanley number three. It's a garage sale find. It's a good sample for this particular uh, project. It hasn't been touched. Let's do a little disassembly. Take off the chip breaker, take off the uh, lever cap, iron and chip breaker. Yeah, this thing is cheap. <laughs> That's okay. That's Let's take the screws off the frog. All right. And you can see the frog only contacts here, 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 and here. If you can see the rub marks on this, it's barely touching anything. It's hitting a little bit right here, a tiny bit here. And man, that's a rough casting. All right. Let me grab a driver. All right. Let's strip this down a little bit. Oops, wrong way. All right. First thing for us to do is to flatten this shelf. And man, these are just rough sand castings. Man, this thing is bad. All right, we're going to come over here to my Granite stone, one right on it. I'm going to put down a piece of 220 wet dry. All right. First, I'm going to flatten off. Yeah. All right, we're getting there.
for the sake of our demonstrations, let's say we've got decent contact across. If I was going to use this plane, I'd go a little further. There's still a couple machine marks, but it's I've got marking right across, so she's relatively flat. Find the bevel. Man, that's bad. This whole spot here is low. All right. There. Starting to hit a little, little spot there still. Okay. Tiny low spot there in the middle, but for the sake of what we're doing right now, let's say this is good. You've got this relatively flat. We have this relatively flat. Now, let's see how that sits. Oh yeah, perfect. Let's see what we got here. Hold it right up there so you can see it. It's only hitting here and here. All right, first thing to do, it's hard to sharpen here, so we're just gonna flatten this, and then we'll work these two back points to take the rock away. This is cast. Take yourself an old piece of uh, tool steel, I've got an old chisel here. I'm just going to scrape a little bit. Take out any high points in the casting. Actually, this one's not terrible down here. I've seen worse on Stanley's. And you can see That'll get a little better in a moment, but at least there's no high points in the casting. Now, just come over here for a moment. Let's get the toad out of our way. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a file, I'm going to square these off a tiny bit and take off a little bit more on the right. Okay. Oh yeah, I can see the high point on this. I'm filing. I'm only taking it off that back edge. This was only hitting in that corner.
try that frog on there again. Still a lot of rock. We're going to take more off here. Getting better. We are still rocking. This, this casting is way off. Still, my goodness. This was a good example to show you because this one is way off. Getting better but still rocking. A little bit more. Yes. Almost there, just a tiny bit of rock. A little bit of a finer file. This side. Oops. Still a tiny bit. There, almost nothing. Now, what we're going to do all right, we're going to take some self adhesive paper. I'm going to start with 80 grit. I'm going to cut some little pieces of self-adhesive roll. And on the top I can just cut one piece wide enough. See what I'm doing here? I'm putting some self-adhesive, 
paper. I'll do the same thing, both of the tips. I'm going to sit the frog in place and I'm just going to move it about. Trying to keep pressure on the two front points and just let the back do its work. Let it mate itself. Move it back and forward, side to side. Now I'm going to take a Sharpie. Backing up. Now, let's see how much contact we're having. All right, I've got good contact in front. Back here, I've got a little hollow spot in the middle. A little hollow spot in the middle. Okay, I'm going to change some paper, mainly for the front. I'm now going to take the file, take the couple of high points out I see on both sides. Okay. Back. Hit it with the Sharpie again. Front. I'm a little low in the back, a little high in the front here. So we're going to take a little off the front. And a little off the inside on this one. Let's see what that looks like. Good, I'm not getting bad. I'm gonna switch to a finer grit paper. Front piece for the front. Take a 
little bit off. For the back. All right, put a fresh adhesive paper down. Straight across, straight across, and all across the front. That's it. If this was a decent plane, I would keep going on this to fall up higher than 120. I'd go all the way up to 400, but we're now hitting all across the front, and we're hitting across and across. And no more rock. All right. Maybe one more thing we should do. This surface You have to take the rivet out over here if you want to do a perfect job, but bring your paper right to the edge of your stone. One, two, three, four, five. Same amount on the other side. We don't want to create a high spot. One, two, three, four, five. that again and we'll go one two three four five Damn it. and on this side one two three four five all right we still have a low spot here if you see where she's still dark but it's catching here so again, if this was a plane that we were actually going to use, we would keep going until we had the best possible contact for the blade to hit. Because if your blade isn't hitting flat on this and you're relying on the chip breaker on the lever cap to pull her down, you're opening up your chances for chatter. But those are the basic steps necessary to mate the four points on the frog to the four points on the plane. And again, if, if this wasn't the fact, I'll probably go back over this and give this plane away to somebody. This isn't a plane I would keep. It's got a huge throat opening. It's just cheaply made. Those are the kind of planes you want to stay away from, just so you know. When you're at a garage sale, if you want to, my opinion on which planes to buy, when you're buying a Stanley, see this bent piece of metal right here? They started doing that in the uh, 60s, uh, and that's generally a sign of a plane you don't want. When you're at a yard sale and you see a plane that has this two-piece, not a bent piece of metal, but a two-piece end on the adjustment lever. This is what you want. Two-piece lever, two-piece lever. What you don't want 
are the ones that have this because ordinarily when you have this bent piece of metal here you've also got a cheap little sheet metal piece for adjusting the depth and on all the decent planes this will be a cast piece Let me see if I can focus that in. Hmm. Here we go. There. You can see this is a cast piece. So, in general, when you see the ones with the bent metal as the lever adjustment, Unless that's all you can find, and don't get me wrong, you can tune them, but those are not the more desirable of the planes. Alright, well anyway, this was just a quick video on how to mate the frog to the sole. You want as good a contact as you can on those four points. All right, well, again, if you like the content and you want to see more tool adjustments, let me know. Uh, do me a favor, hit subscribe. <laughs> All right, you have your good, have a good day. Bye-bye.